Well, here we are, day two of tearing down this EcoBoost four cylinder, and we have a lot done, but we still have a tremendous amount more work to go. So we're gonna go ahead and start ripping and tearing more parts off this thing and start cracking it open and see what we can find inside. I mean, so far, so good. I haven't, at least from what I've taken off of it, have seen anything crazy, thankfully. From what I have seen, there's no windows inside of the block, so that's nice. All the damage is contained to the cylinder. So, like, it's a bad enough damage to prevent the engine from running, but it wasn't bad as it can get with these things, thankfully. Um, because as long as the cylinder walls are not completely scored up to death, it looks like the block will be savable. So, we still have to get to that point and see, but we have a lot more work to go, tearing off the rest of these accessories to get everything off, get the timing cover off, the oil pan, the uh, valve cover, the turbo, all that. So without any more talking, let's go ahead and get back to work. I need more coffee. I need a lot more than coffee. Okay, there we go. I'm getting really bad at this, but, oh, okay. That's what that looks like, I didn't realize that's how that looked on the inside. Interesting. Yes, I know I've said that a lot, but seriously, no, I find this very interesting. I like learning how things work. Let's go ahead and get these knock sensors. And, you know, thinking about it, if there was some type of unexpected knock or something or detonation, these are supposed to pull back timing at least enough to protect your engine. If that was the case, obviously there was not enough pulled back. I don't know if I want to get a new set of those just to be sure that they weren't a problem when I put this back together. I just, I want to mitigate costs, but I also don't want to, you know, rule out any important parts that could ruin thousands of dollars of repairs. I do have slight concerns about that. All right, let's go ahead and finish getting this breather thing off, whatever, crankcase breather, whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> All right, little gasket with it, and grand. Oh, no. You see what I see? More confetti. That was trapped by this thing. It was like a baffle that it lays on. I'm hoping that a lot of this stuff has trapped all these little bits of metal from going through everything. You know, I did put the larger oil filter on. It just so happens that this happens, so hopefully the larger filter also caught a lot of crap before it circulated too, too much. But once again, the important part is pulling that pan off and we'll find more out. The tensioner pulley over here. Come on, there it goes. All right, got our idler pulley here. All right, there's that. Coming over here to turbo land. Go ahead and get the boost solenoid off. Okay, there we go. Boost solenoids removed. Now I just gotta remove the turbo. Okay, so I, I took a break from this and I came back and what I realized was the studs were spinning with the nut coming out. So the studs were getting longer, not allowing the turbo to come off. So I'm not sure why it did that. That's what it did. Oh God, yeah, dude, it was barely on there. Oh God, this thing has some weight to it. Turbo's off. Now here's a question I've always had. On an overhead cam engine, is it a valve cover or is it a cam cover? Is there a difference? Is it the same thing? Is one actually correct? I don't know. Whew. All right, how are we looking in here? Man, look at that. That looks good. Look at those cam lobes. There's like hardly any scoring on them. It must be from all those oil changes I do. I mean, look, this is why you change your oil, everyone. And I change mine a lot. A lot more than Ford even says I need to. Yet here we are tearing down a motor, not because of oil change issues, but from other problems. We gotta get this time cover off. And to do that, of course, we gotta remove our uh, crank pulley. Man, you would not believe 
how much time I just spent trying to pull this damn crank bolt off. I mean, it was stuck on there. It was giving my Harbor Freight uh, electric impact a real workout, but it got it off. Got it off. Okay, you wouldn't believe it, but I just spent like an hour alone on trying to remove the timing chain cover and I finally got it loose. So not only do you have all those bolts in the way, but you have silicone everywhere. There's no gasket for this. It's all siliconed on, which I, you know, guess I can understand. And I took a box cutter and as I was prying around, I was going in between the gasket and slicing the silicone. It was the only way I could get it out. I'm not sure why there's so much silicone or why they couldn't use a combination of a gasket and silicone. And if you look closely, you can see that they had silicone around here here, it goes all the way around the edge. So that all has to be redone and around here. Now the interesting part is, and I took a picture of this uh, before I removed the cover, is this little piece of silicone right here. If you look very closely, it's actually up against the timing chain. If you look here, if I pull this back, you can see where the timing chain was chewing into this piece of silicone. That's crazy to me to think that that was put together that way. Like I said, I don't think it actually done anything. Theoretically, a chunk of the silicone can break off, right? And it can clog up oil passages and all kinds of things leading to failure of components. And this is Ford's doing, not mine. So that is really concerning, really is. But regardless of that, the next thing we need to do is remove the timing chain and everything here, the guides and whatnot. And then we'll go ahead and I think we'll work on taking the oil pan off. So let's go ahead and get this timing chain out of the way. Ah, oh, attention to God. Oh, it's bringing back Cobra days, except a lot less silicone and a lot more timing chain. And you know what else I find weird on the EcoBoost engine is there's no timing marks on any of the gears or anything. So like on the Cobra, I found out that it's actually really easy to like, remove the timing chain and put it back, as long as you don't disturb the orientation of the cam gears or the crank gear, but as long as they stay in place, there's actually markers on the teeth of the gears and the crank sprocket. So, and then there's a link in the chain that's a different color. So all you gotta do is line everything up and then you're good to go. Here on the EcoBoost, they don't have that. There's no easy way to put it back together. You have to manually time the whole thing which is kind of annoying. They need to go back to those designs, but I'm um, taking a look at the timing chain. It actually looks pretty good. Don't see a problem with that. I think I got all of those bolts out on the oil pan, so now I'm gonna have to take uh, an hour or more. This thing's separated, so uh, let, me, let me work on that. Okay, so I'm actually pretty shocked. I did not even get that far into removing the oil pan before I found something very notable. What I found this time is very concerning. Take a look here. Look right there. I just happened to see this. It's kind of hard to tell in the GoPro, uh, but see right to the left of the flashlight, that line right there, that line is a crack in the bearing cap. And look where it goes to. It, for, it comes from the bottom of the cap here. See, it starts at the bottom of the casting there, and then it goes all the way up. What the hell? Let me guess, my fault, right? How is that? How does that happen? Now I'm definitely, definitely not sure about uh, any of this now because finding this is huge. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to removing the oil pan. Hopefully I don't find any more discoveries, but if I do, I'll be sure to update the video. Well, I didn't get that far until I found something even more. So this is really interesting. Um, I, I took a picture of it with my phone so you can see it better. But right here where the main cat bolt is, there is a hairline crack going here. You'll see it better in the picture. And it goes up to this like rough part I don't know if this is actually rubbing in because this is actually protruding. So this is just like a really rough cast, but there's a hairline crack that goes from the bolt up there. That means either it was over tightened during initial assembly or it's a bad casting, right? Because I have no way of touching that. 
This is the first time this has all been apart. So I have no way of messing with that. But look at that, there's a hairline crack right there. And then there's of course the first crack I found on this front bearing cap. We're gonna keep digging. Well, as you can see, get the oil pan off. I did that off camera because it was a little bit of a pain. But now we get to go fishing for surprises. So we're gonna take a magnet here and start fishing through here and see what we can pick up. I've already found uh, these pieces here, obviously. This, this is some of the piston rings. Some larger chunks here of aluminum. I guess that's the piston itself. There is some buildup of aluminum here in the corner of the pan. Ooh, don't fall. That'll make a mess. So there's, there's that. Oh yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff here in this corner. Look at that. Oh, and you think that corner was bad? <laughs> oh, there's the piston. There it is, all right there. It's all down here in the sump, which is where I thought it would be. Look how much broken up this is. This is completely shattered. I mean, there isn't one bit of this piston left. Look at this. That is nuts. Look at that, that is all piston. I've never seen something like that before. Like that it broke up in so much small pieces and disintegrated like that and how it was just that one piston. I think, I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna figure that part out, but wow. <laughs> That's a lot worse than I thought, a lot. It's time to get this flipped over here. Well, I can't see too much in here because we've got this uh, balance shaft thing and I gotta get that in the way. And get the oil pickup out of the way. Yeah, there we go. Pickup tubes off. All right, balance shaft out of the way. So now we can see all of our main bearing caps here. Well, that sucks. Teeth on that. I mean, I don't have to use a balance shaft because the gear is a little chewed up. Of course, that would be cylinder three right there anyway. Hey, I just now realized that cylinder three is the one that does connect to the balance shaft. I'm um, looking at the rest of these caps. I mean, just from what I can see here, I don't see nothing crazy. The casting on the block is rough though, really rough. Actually, the casting on everything in here is really rough. I'm looking down in there, I didn't realize these have uh, individual oil squirters. See them down in there? I don't know if you can see it. Right there. Yeah, each cylinder has an oil squirter. That's cool, didn't know that. I mean, at least it looks like Ford tried to put some effort in making this a nice high performance engine. But what makes me really curious is now that I know it was, you know, cylinder three here, that's the one that failed. And this is also the one that connects to the balance shaft. I don't think that there's any correlation, but I find that interesting. You know, the one that failed is also the one that has to drive this thing, which uh, I don't know how much resistance it takes to spin this. Oh my God, is this seized? because if it was seized, I feel like all the teeth would be broken, right? You can see that all the teeth on here are all chewed up though. And I cannot imagine, oh, there it goes. Jesus, oh, I think I just cut myself, nice. That's hard to believe that the engine has to push so hard, use so much energy to turn this, there's no way easily be able to turn with my fingers, right? You, you would think. I mean, it's loosening up. There it goes. I think it was just a little stuck. Oh, but it's binding up though. Interesting. Has these ever done this to the point where they can cause problems? I mean, you know, here's just a hypothetical. If this failed, right, and this gear started binding up while this is all moving, I wonder if more, if somewhere along this gear, teeth are completely sheared off. I, I still, I don't know, I'll have to look. But I wonder if that bound up while this is going and because it bound up, it tried slowing this cylinder down really, really quick while this one's still going. That's a possibility because that doesn't make any sense to me. 
I mean, if I'm spinning this, this should, it binds up right there. And then you spin it, it loosens up. And then keep spinning it, and then it binds up again. So it binds up halfway turn around, and then it loosens up. That's interesting. So this sucks too. Look at that. That's broke right there. How that happened, I don't even know. Okay, some time has passed. The weekend has come, and I uh, had to get some stuff done. But we're back in the garage now, and uh, I think now we're finally going to go ahead and start getting cams out so we can get the head off. So I think this is a pretty straightforward task. Just gotta get the caps off here and we should be good to go. All right, moment of truth. Head's coming off. Oh, God, I don't even want to know what I want to see under here. This this part is the part that has really concerned me, but let's go ahead and get it done. See what's under here. Three, two, one. Oh, 